our marshmallows at because it's about to get roasting in here. Y'all, I did a video a while ago where I was reading horrible reviews of products that I love. And so I asked you guys, what products do you love? And I am going to read terrible, awful, no good reviews. <laughs> One star! One star of the products that you guys love and enjoy. Let's get into it. Hello everyone, Kayla here, and this is What The Kink, a natural hair channel where I help frustrated naturals simplify their routines so they get more results by doing less. Hello, come on somebody. So listen, I know somebody's going to ask me about it, so I'm gonna address it right here in the front of the video, okay? People won't be like, yeah, hair. I'm gonna have some people that's gonna ask me questions about my hair. Listen, this is a completely different wave set than from the previous video. I fixed everything that I didn't like about that other set. And then instead of trying to sleep on it, I immediately went into setting it into these really chunky twists using only things I would be able to have in a travel bag. It produced a look that I liked, that I was like, yes, girl. Yes, honey, I'm outside with this. And then I stopped setting it and just started wearing my regular, you know, bonnet and everything that I normally wear to bed, how I do my wash and go. And it produces hair that looks like this that has not been set in the last couple days. I thought that was shed hair and I realized it was still attached. So that's why it's stretched out. But... <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's why it looks like this. And honey, why do I bother setting my hair? Because the way the Growlies have been going out of their way to speak to me, of all races, of all ages, to say that they like this hair? Girl, why do I even bother? I, you know, I'm just, I'm just gonna start coming out looking like I'm from the 70s all the time because the Growlies are loving it. Anyways, the first product that I am going to have on the roast list is going to be the Shea Moisture Raw Shea Butter Shampoo. Um, somebody loves this. Somebody loves you, baby. Um, I actually have used this product in the past as well, so I have a little bit of experience with it. And when I say past, I mean like 2013, 2014. Um, so, one star. B.I.? I don't know if they made a mistake or something with how they titled this review. I'm not sure. But they say... I was very disappointed first wash and I had to use almost the whole bottle I have curly not too thick hair and my hair felt like it needs to be washed after using the shampoo and conditioner I was left with thick oil layer on my hair don't buy okay uh, another review says do not buy um, use this shampoo once and it completely coated my hair making it feel waxy and gross it took three separate washes and Dawn dish soap, girl, boy, to finally get all the product out of my hair. In the meantime, my hair was falling out in clumps. Woo! Absolutely do not buy. So disappointed because I normally love Shea Moisture products, but I will not ever be buying again. Now, I really don't know why their hair could be falling out in clumps. Now, that part, I was like, dang, bro. I, I don't know why their hair could be falling out, but there were there was a trend in the uh, reviews uh, of people saying that this this product like felt like either they felt like it didn't clean their hair or they felt like it left a film on their hair. And then there was also a, a, a recurring thing with people saying, hey, guys, this is reformulated and I can tell and the reformulation is terrible. I'm so sad about it being reformulated. I can just tell you from my experience of using this really really long time ago so that's pre any reformulation rumors or reformulation actually at all and I can tell you that the shampoo I had the exact same experience with this shampoo as people are saying are a part of the reformulated experience I feel like maybe it wasn't the reformulation that's causing this but you guys have different expe expectations of natural hair products than you did back then so now you're trying it after trying all this other stuff and having different expectations for your hair and you're not liking it I mean yes it could have been reformulated when you um, sell things in different markets. You do have to reformulate so they can be accepted in these different markets. Um, as in like, if you want to sell in Target, you can't do the same ish that you were doing when you were selling on your website alone. There are rules and things that you have to change for that reason. Um, and so it's not necessarily a bad thing. I've seen things change formulation and the formulation still works the same. So reformulation, I really wish that it was not this bad word that has become in our community. But this shampoo... I'm sorry to the person that recommended it that likes this shampoo. I hate this shampoo. I did not like it then. I think I did try it again a little bit later. I still don't like it. It does leave a coating feeling on the hair. And that is because most of these Shea Moisture shampoos 
all contain very light cleansers. These are sulfate free cleansers that are not like the the hardcore ones. I think one of them that they like to use is like Deco Glucoside. They love that one. They put that, I think that's the one that they put in almost all of their products. But like, yeah, like the, and then they, they do, they, the Shea Moisture products have a lot of oils and a lot of butters and a lot of whatever. So when you're shampooing your hair off, there is going to be a little bit of something deposited and left on the hair. Um, this is a moisture shampoo and moisture shampoos do sometimes have those extra ingredients that do like leave a little bit of like a deposit on the hair. And Shea Moisture shampoo just does that. That's not the reformulation that's making it do that. This shampoo is just like that. I personally would not buy it. I don't like the way that it makes my hair feel. Next up on the chopping block is another product that I have tried before and that is Camille Rose Curl Maker. Um, so I thought the review was very interesting for this one as well. First one, it says, not for low porosity hair. Hmm, interesting. Based on these reviews, people either love or hate this product. That's true. I have two C3A wavy curls, none of that matters, that needs moisture and definition. I use the Honey Leave-In plus Curl Love on soaking wet hair, then sections apply the curl maker to each strand. After diffusing for an hour, most of my hair is still stringy. I have used the same leave-ins with the Honey Mousse, and that works much better for me. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now from personal experience with Camille Rose using it back then in the day and then using it kind of a little bit more recent to today's time. Not like super like using it with topper gels and all that stuff, like nah, 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 but like closer. Um, you cannot put tons of leave-ins underneath this stuff. First of all, I tried it with the Curl Love underneath it hate the curl love i immediately upon applying the curl love to my hair i was like oh this gel is very almost moisturizing on its own it's got the humectants and all that kind of stuff so you really don't want to put all these things underneath it this person put two different leave-in products underneath it that is going to weigh the hair down that is going to decrease the definition because for me curl maker does not give me a ton of definition it really doesn't um, i can get a wash and go that lasts for one day with curl maker so i'll be darned if i'm putting tons of products underneath it um, and then on top of that, they said in sections applied the curl maker on each strand. So I'm assuming they did kind of like small sections. You don't want to do that with curl maker. You don't want to do that with curl maker. You definitely want it to be, and, and with botanical gels in general, you want to style them with bigger sections. That way the product doesn't have a chance to get like too much product on, on the hair. Because um, I think that's why their hair came out stringer, that stringy. There was just too much product on their hair um which leads me to the next review they specifically call out hey i didn't use a lot of product ew i absolutely hated this stuff i used the curl maker in combination with the camille rose honey hydrate leave-in my hair initially felt soft the first day or two then seemed to get pretty dry this stuff flaked like crazy. I thoroughly clarified my hair before using it. And when I tell you I was very light-handed with the product, I was very light-handed. Yet and still, it flaked like mad. Uh, when I parted my hair to restyle, I found disgusting spots of glob and tiny little balls of the product all throughout my hair. The sight of it made me gag and almost throw up. It was so disgusting. Back to Target this goes. I bought this in the past and disliked it, so I thought I'd give it another chance. And this time, I hate it. Never again. Again, comboing this, it seems to be that that honey hydrate leave-in is not a good pairing with this, apparently. I, I, I have seen people successfully pair the Curl Love Moisture Milk, but two people mentioned this same honey hydrate. Maybe honey hydrate is the problem. It's me. Hi, I'm the problem, Missy. <laughs> um, I don't think we should be using this leave-in because it doesn't seem to be bolding well for this leave-in. I'm sorry to the people that love it. Um, and then they said that they found the balls and stuff. If they didn't use a lot of the product, I am willing to bet that there was a bad reaction between that and the honey leave-in and it doesn't seem to be that they, they applied water. This is another one of these, uh, these little humectant tea, whatever things, another like botanical gel tip. A lot of these tend to need additional water, you need to add water to your hair. So I'm thinking that probably need to happen as well to help them distribute this product and to decrease the uh, appearance of the balls in their hair. Um, and if there's balls in your hair, when they dry, they turn to flakes, which would also result in the flaking that this person got as well. Um, but yeah, 
Camille Rose. Not one of my favorites either, but I've not had experiences that are as bad as these. Okay, next up we have Uncle Funky's Daughter Curly Magic Curl Stimulator. You guys were recommending tons of things that I've tried this time around. So, um, I knew this would have bad reviews. So when the person recommended it, I was like, heck yes. I knew that I was going to be able to get plenty of crap reviews for this one. So, uh, first one says, don't do it! This completely ruined my wash and go. It left large clumps of white stuff all in my hair. I had to rinse it out and rewash my hair. I was so disappointed, especially after seeing this product used on YouTube tutorials. I had high hopes. Same thing with the Camille Rose. If you're seeing clumps, probably need to add water and probably need to use less product. Or it could be used the right amount of product, but you need to add water. Run away from this product! This product is horrible. Horrible. It doesn't penetrate your hair and leaves it super dry. This is nothing more than cheap curl activator. I think S, think S curl activator. I will say that the way I use this, it's very much like curl activator. You activate the curls and then you put another gel on top of it. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna complain about that. I agree. Curl activator, but better quality ingredient curl activator. <laughs> um, I literally washed and conditioned my hair. Then I applied my L leave-in conditioner and then this and my hair instantly dried out the my L product. Don't put this on top of other stuff. For sure. Um, again, these products act more like a leave-in. They tend to have humectants and stuff in them. I just do not recommend putting um, other products underneath these um, botanical gels. They may suck uh, like moisture from that additional product. They may react badly. Stuff like that. I, I, I wouldn't do it. I'm so disappointed Target stopped carrying the Dew Cream. That is what I was expecting, something more of that caliber. I'm unfamiliar with the Dew Cream, so you guys let me know, like, what does the Dew Cream do? Um, and do you think that it would do something that is comparable to the Uncle Funky's Daughter Curly Magic? Or, like, were they expecting something that was realistic to expect Curly Magic to do compared to this cream product? I, I, I know what the cream product looks like in my mind's eye, but I've never really, like, looked into it super hardcore. But yeah, I, I, I do think this product is curl activator. <laughs> I do. I, I really do. Um, but I think all the humectants and stuff like that could pair poorly with certain leave-ins that you want to put underneath it. And I'm not that familiar with this Myel leave-in, but I can imagine that it probably did have a bad reaction um, with it. So uh, quite, quite unfortunate. But y'all, please use these botanical gels as the product. Like put it next to your naked hair and you will get the best results. Treat these, these things like leave-in conditioner. Is, is, is what I'm trying to say. All right, this one I've never tried before, and I also had a special request around this one. So this is the main choice three-in-one uh, conditioner, and the person specifically said original formula. Now, I'm not sure when the formulation was changed, so I just toggled it to like the oldest reviews possible within the one-star reviews. And so I got a, re a review from 2017 and a review from 2018. Hopefully these reviews are old enough that I'm getting the original formula. This one said, not for me. Fair enough. Hated it. I think this product would work fine if you have 3A hair that does not matter. I had to really smooth the product in my hair and even use a paper towel to remove the white residue. I used it as a leave-in and my hair looked dry. Dry is not really a look, but that's okay. My hair is not really coarse, so it's not like I always have to find the perfect products to make my hair shine. Uh, I like other products from this brand and will continue to purchase. I really wouldn't be looking to a product to give you too much shine, um, not like a leave-in. Uh, sometimes shine is just some folks hair gonna shine and some folks hair not gonna shine. Um, there are products that I find do make my hair appear more shiny, but um, I definitely wouldn't be looking for shine. Shine does not indicate that your hair is healthy or that you're, that you're in the right direction with your hair care. Shine is really a, va a vanity metric. It's really not that important. But, um, and this, this comment about coarse hair, um, coarseness has to do with the thickness of your individual hair strands. So like if I were to pluck a hair out of here and hold it up, like if you can really prominently see that piece of hair, y'all know the people, then that person has coarse hair. If you can like barely see the hair, then that's like fine hair, which by the way, Audra Beauty's new gel coming out is for fine hair. And that, that definition is really tearing people up. Listen, 
Fine hair doesn't mean what these people think it means. <laughs> Um, a fine hair means that the individual pieces of your hair are not super thick when you hold them up. Um, and a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all probably have fine hair. A lot of y'all have fine hair. It's, it's pretty prevalent with Afro textured hair for it to be fine, but I don't think we're really, we're willing to have that conversation. So anyway, got another review for the three in one that I hope is the original formulation. Um, not very moisturizing. Today is July 7th, 2018. I purchased this product along with the shampoo and condition in the same line. I typically prefer liquid leave-in conditioner, but read so many reviews on this and other main choice products. I wanted to try it. My hair did not feel hydrated. They did air quotes. Or moisturized after using any of these items. I have unprocessed hair and need hydration slash moisture desperately. Hydration comes from water and regularly washing your hair. Um, not from a bottle or a product. Sadly, this is not the product for me. My hair still felt parched. And honestly, there was a trend with all the reviews because um, there was another review in here too. And everybody was just saying that the product just made their hair feel dry. Um, so I feel like, you know, this product probably just does not have uh, probably a lot of the ingredients that people like that make their hair feel coated or make it feel like there is something like making their hair moisturize because moisturize means to moisten as in to put something on it and 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 so hydrate is water like for hot water to be entered that's how I remember moisturize is to moisten to put something on a hair and so they're, they're they're wanting their hair to be moisturized for something to be on the hair and I guess the ingredients in here probably don't provide that I I, I, I glanced at the ingredients I saw a couple of typical you know shampoo uh, conditioner ingredients however I know that this was reformulated so I was like looking at the ingredients is pointless because I don't know what the original ingredients were because these people are clearly reviewing something that's not the ingredients that are currently listed on the site so the person who loves this product please chime in because the trend was that people were saying that it made their hair feel dry all right next we have the Kemet burdock root butter cream I have not used this product but it has been around for a while so I'm sure a lot of you guys have probably used this product so this, this person straight up, straight up said, not for type four naturals. I was like, whoop, cause that's mainly who buys commit products. That's mainly the, the target audience for these products. Uh, this one really caught my attention. And it said, I was hyped to try this based on the reviews. Well, it's already in the garbage. <laughs> it is full of alcohols and made my hair extremely dry brittle and overall poorly looking i should have read the ingredients beforehand but definitely not meant for type 4 low porosity hair lord this one i was like okay so full of alcohol so they are making comments on the ingredients and saying that they should have checked the ingredients and if they had they would not have purchased so i did something a little different than i did with the other products and i actually did dive into the ingredients i actually went and pulled up the ingredients list and so i'm like okay they're complaining there's alcohols in this product so I'm looking at the product, right? We've got uh, distilled water. We have a little bit of tea water going on. What's in the tea water is burdock root. Uh, we got nettle, nettle leaf, oat straw. Um, and then after that, it goes straight to some olive oil, uh, a little bit of glycerin going on. Um, and then we've got some extract, got a wheat extract, cedar alcohol, cedar alcohol, sterile alcohol. They have all the fatty alcohols located here. Um, sterile alcohol and chloride, we've got MSM. There is a little bit of citrus and stuff in there too, which I believe is there for scent. I don't think it's actually there for like, like benefits of citrus. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, all the alcohols they're talking about, they're fatty alcohols. Those are not drying alcohols. Those are alcohols that you want in your product because those are alcohols that are going to provide slip. Those are alcohols that tend to be the higher up on the ingredients they list that they are for me. They make your hair a lot more slippery. They make your hair a lot easier to brush through if you're detangling. Um, they give it your hair that like that, that feeling that you expect to get from a conditioner. That's what the fatty alcohols do, right? So their complaint about being full of alcohol immediately immediately no but what I would have noticed if I was going to be buying this product is I would be like dang the fatty alcohols are a little bit lower on the ingredients list than I would like I find that when I use products that have the um fatty alcohols a little lower I don't get as much slip from the product I don't feel like my hair like feels as nice <laughs> when the fatty alcohols when there's either not a lot of them or if they're really low on the ingredients list and I'm not saying they're really low here, but they're just lower than, you know, I had to skim to find them, you know. 
Um, and then this product contains MSM. I know some people don't like the way their hair feels if there's MSM present um, in, in, in the product either. Um, and so I think that that's really what it is, is that the fatty alcohols that they're complaining about are just not high enough on, on the ingredients list for them. This product has more olive oil than it does any of the other um, conditioning type ingredients. And so um, the olive oil is, uh, what's, what's the, proper, the proper word? emollient occlusive what is emoli uh, whatever it's an emollient which emollients coat and they lubricate so it will coat the hair and then it will provide lubrication which depending on what you're doing you might want that but this person obviously was trying to make their hair feel a certain way that it was not feeling um and they're not getting it from this uh formulation so um yeah if i haven't read the ingredients i probably wouldn't pick this up either but for a completely different reason than them there, of course, were many other products that I could have roasted. You guys gave me a very, very long list. Yes, I do have them cataloged and categorized and saved, but of course the video would be way too long if I did every single one in a video. So depending on the response to this video, um, I will make more episodes of these. I have enough to make at least three different episodes or maybe four episodes of this, honestly. So it all depends on if this is a hit or a miss. So that means I have to give this video a really good title and I have to give it a really good thumbnail so that people will click on it and actually want to watch it, okay? But anyways, definitely go check out the video where I roast my favorites. Um, the video didn't get as much love, but the people who watched it really did enjoy it. So if you like this, I know 100% you will definitely enjoy that video. We'll let YouTube recommend another video that it thinks that you want to see. Subscribe. I post videos every week and I'll talk to you in the next one.